Hi, welcome to a bit of Christmas crafting with Kathy. In today's clip, we're going to use our Santa hat and put it on a couple of different animals. So we're going to be using some of our, particularly our Aussie animals, and then popping the Santa hat on, coloring in a couple of different ways. So let's have a look at the stamps. So some of the ones that the Santa hat works with, they need to be facing straight on or to the left for it to work the best. So things like the mare, emu, the camel, some of our dogs, the collie and the pooch, as well as the schnauzer and the pug, um, all works fine on those. Um, should be able to be done on the rosella, but not so good on the kookaburras. So the kookaburras are facing to the right, which means that as we put our um, Santa hat on, it's going to come over his beak. So it doesn't, it just needs, doesn't go on the right way on him. So you need to look for an animal that's looking in the other direction, similar to what we've done on the mare here. Just gonna show you a bit with this one. I haven't stuck it together yet, so I could show you what we did. So I've stamped, uh, as the background, I've stamped the holly, and used the, just stamped bits of it around the card with the uh, Versafine Spanish Moss and then coloured the edge of the card with the Spanish moss as well. So sometimes some of your stamps can be used as border stamps as well as as a feature stamp. So then we've stamped the mare. I've just brushed on a bit of dry colour uh, just from the uh, smoky grey ink pad. And the hat I've coloured in with one of our Pentel brush markers. On the snowy part of the hat, I actually put some white liquid pearls and then just sprinkled a little bit of loose glitter on it and that makes a great snowy effect. So I just wanted to let you see how the, so it's sitting over one of her ears, and I'll show you in a moment when we actually do the samples, how we actually put it together to make a card look like that. The other thing I wanted to comment on was the Merry Christmas. Now this is called Fun Merry Christmas, and we have Fun Merry Christmas and Fun Seasons Greetings. But in the same font, we also have a couple of greetings. So you can sort of mix and match those ones together a little bit. So I try and do a few things that you, so that you can use them together, particularly with our sayings. So that's a couple of Christmas sayings that go together. This is another little one just to have a look at. This is using the Border Collie. He hasn't been coloured at all. He's just been embossed in black, as has the hat. I would always, if I'm going to emboss one, emboss the other, or don't emboss either. And then he's just been laid with some, uh, we've die cut a couple of shapes out. He's got the little script season's greetings there and just a bit of ribbons on. So you can see how easy it is to make up a really good card with them. Okay, what I'm using today in today's sample is going to be the Romantic Merry Christmas and our emu. Because <laughs> I can't resist a bit of emu. For colouring, we'll do our stamping, um, we're going to do a bit of stamping in Versamark and embossing. We're also using the Versafine Spanish Moss and the Versafine Onyx Black. And then for our colouring, I'm actually going to use some of our Pentel colour brush markers. So let's get started. So to start with, I'm actually going to pop the greeting on the card. Uh, where's my little bit? I've got some bits of card cut already. So we're going to pop our greeting on, and this one we're going to use the Romantic Merry Christmas, and I'm actually going to colour it with the brush marker. So we just get our brush marker out, and we just try and tap it to the raised part of the stamp. These brush markers do stain the stamps, so I really don't want to get it all over this backing area. I always try and avoid staining those bits, because that's how you see where you're stamping by that backing area. Now once you've done your colouring, you can give it a little mist with water, but that would make it go a bit more smudgy. And I would like this to be, it won't be as crisp as if I'd use stamping ink, but I still want to be able to read it. I don't want it all smudgy. So it just takes a few minutes just to color around the whole thing. And it's worth taking a few minutes so you don't, if you do too quickly, that's when you get it all on that backing. So just give yourself a moment to color in. And because I want it to be, I'm not going to be mushing it, I actually do want to make sure that I've covered the whole of the design well. Now because I'm going to have, there's a little bit of time elapsing between doing my first bit of inking and getting to the end, I'm actually similar to if you ink 
a stamp with a normal marker pen. I'm going to just give it a little bit of a huff on it and then stamp it onto our card. Now we're going to go over this in a few minutes with some clear embossing powder. So I just need to leave that sit and dry for a moment. So while that's drying, we're going to make our background card. Let's give our stamp a little clean. As I said, these markers do stay in the stamps, which is why I'm happy to have it on the design, but I don't want it all that backing area. Okay, let's actually create our background piece. Now for our background piece, I've already run a bit of card through, now this is the 300 GSM cotton blend cardstock, and then our main piece is on the 200 GSM cotton blend. That's because the background I'm gonna be putting a lot more water on, so I want it to be a bit sturdier. But as you can see, even the 300 GSM, you can run through an embossing folder and give us a nice raised design. Now in an earlier video, I did show how you could actually put inks onto your embossing folder to ink the background. But on this one, we're actually going to do more of a smooshy background. And I'm going to do it in this other colors that I want to use on this card. So not necessarily traditional Christmas colors. We're going to have some turquoise. So I'm just popping on a little bit on my craft mat from the brush marker. And we probably want a bit more turquoise than brown. And then, but we are gonna pop a little bit of sepia in there as well. And to make it nice and metallic, rather than spritzing with water, I'm going to spritz with my spray that I've made from Perfect Pearls and water. So we'll give that a good shake. Make sure I get all that pearl out of the bottom. Nice. So we'll give that a spritz. And then I'm gonna get my card. Now first I'll do just a basic smoosh. And pick it up. Now I mainly want the color. It's going to pick up on the embossed area first, but because we're doing smooshy stuff, it will get into the backing, which is what I'm, I want. I, I don't want it all overly neat or I would have inked the embossing folder. I mainly need the edges to be covered because that's what's going to show. So let's make sure we go right the way around the edges with the card. Just smooshing it onto our craft mat. Making sure we get some bits of brown and some lovely turquoise. Let's just give it a little bit more on that side. Okay, now I'm just going to give oh, a bit more down the end there. Might have been where I was hanging onto it. Brilliant, okay. Let's give it another bit of a spritz with the metallic just to make those inks smudge out a little bit more. And then we leave that piece to sit and dry. So while that's dry, now this uh, embossing folder I used was a Couture Creations one called Christmas Vineyard. Um, I know die folders tend to come and go a bit. They usually have a release and then they're not available. So that might be something, but they always come out with a new range each year of really gorgeous dies. Let me grab my paper towel that I had ready, almost ready, give my mat a clean. Of course, if I was doing this at home, I'd probably create, <laughs> doing it at home, I am home. Yeah. If, I, if I was doing it not for a video, I'd probably create a couple of backgrounds from that nice mushy lot of color before I kept going. Now, let's hope this is nice and dry. I'm gonna go over it with my anti-static pad. And we're going to stamp over it because we can't now emboss over that pen. What we're going to do is ink up with our VersaMark stamp over the top and then emboss it with clear detail powder. So I'll just get my powder ready and my catching sheet ready. I'm gonna give that a wipe on me and make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, so now we're inking up with our VersaMark. So this is a way of turning images into that are done with inks that don't emboss like your multicolor dye inks, like your collider color inks. And also things like brush markers. This is how we can make them embossable. Now, it's a clear powder that's going over the top. What we're going to see of the letters is the red underneath. So it doesn't matter if you don't stamp exactly over the top of it. Let's sprinkle on our clear powder. Get our nice little fine brush. What have I done with my fine one? There it is. Give ourselves a tap on the side, good tap on the back, have a check, 
and that looks like I've lined it up pretty well. But as I said, it wouldn't matter if it's not exact. It's to give a raised, shiny effect over most of the lettering. We do want it fairly close because the idea of embossing this is so that it's going to act as a resist when we start doing stamping the emu and doing our background colouring. So let's give that a quick heat. Just give my heat gun a bit of a warm up. Actually, while I'm warming it up, I'll dry this a bit. the bigger blobs there that are going to take too long to dry so let's speed that up a little bit okay now let's give ourselves an emboss here it's going to bring everything out looking nice and shiny cool now when we're doing our Santa hat on our animals we need to stamp the Santa hat first but I'm going to have a look with my emu on the card and just see where am I going to put him so that I know whereabouts to stamp the hat. I don't want to stamp it so it's over one of his eyes. So it's going to have to be fairly close to the top of the card and just sitting off to that side a bit. So now I know where I'm going to stamp that. We could do this in a stamping platform if you wanted to or you can just ink it up and stamp away by guesswork. Now sometimes you have to change the angle of the hat. I'm doing it fairly straight down on this one. On the mare, I had to do it more sideways so that it would cover her ear better. So have a look at how it's going to sit on your animal before you actually do your stamping. Now we're going to cover that with a mask. I just need to reach over and grab my little mask that I've already made out of a post-it note. So I cover that up with the mask. Now we ink up with the Versafine. So this is where if I was going to be embossing, I would emboss the emu and the hat, or I do both of them with Versafine and don't emboss them. You need them to look the same. So now we can have a look at our emu where our hat is and work out where it's going to fit best. Lay him down, give him a good press so that those eyes are nice and black on our card. Lift up. And now I'm just going to grab my, it was going to be, oh, there, my cloth that should be on my leg, my cleaning cloth, and just buff over our letters and just lift off any Versafine that's sitting over the top of those embossed letters. So that way, because they were embossed, it's resisted the ink and so it's gone in underneath. Oh, that's a lovely technique for your hands, isn't it? Smooshing in the background. Uh, and now when we lift off our mask off here, our little hat is to the front of the emu. So let's do a little bit of colouring for our emu first. So I'll bring up my work pad again. have an orange out for his beak. I think I do need a little bit of orangey colour. Maybe just a pale peach for his beak. I don't want to be it to be competing with the other colours that I want to use. So I think we just need a little bit of soft peach. So I'll use my medium water brush. Just make sure I've got a little bit of water flowing through there and not too much. And just smudge that out. So these Pentel brush markers are very, very blendable. and can be used, as you can see, directly on the paper. You can watercolour with them, you can put them directly on your stamps, and you can also do some lovely brush calligraphy with them. So we're just giving him a little bit of colour there, but not too much. Right. And because I don't think he'll look good with red eyes, we'll give him orange, oh, we could give him turquoise eyes, couldn't we? started with orange. Give him orange eyes. So there I'm colouring it a bit stronger. Now when I was doing the Santa hat on the mare, I actually coloured the whole thing 
quite strongly in the red, but you can, I didn't do any water on it at all. You can color it and similar to what we've done on the beak, if I drag that out with my water brush, I'm going to get some natural highlights and shadows happening. Just gotta be careful I don't go too much over my edges. So color it deeper where you think there might be a shadow. And then drag it up to where you think there might be some highlights so it's, it's naturally a softer color when we get there. I might make this bit all nice and dark. And then just drag it up. Now, if you're worried about going over your edges, turn your card around and do that last bit of blending just with the tip of the brush up to your edge. Now I'm thinking that that's too much highlight, so let's just add a bit more red in there so that we're getting just the top part. Now if I take, I've added too much red in there, I can just get my brush and just push a little bit away. I don't want these highlights looking too strong. Mainly because I still want the hat to look quite red. I don't want it coming out looking pinky. Okay. So we're still quite red, but we've just got a little bit of highlight there up along the top. Now, to colour our actual emu, this is where I'm going to use the turquoise and the sepia that we used on the, the background. So we'll do a little bit of turquoise in there first. So I'm just going to sort of follow some of his feathery lines and then come in with my water brush and just drag that out a little bit. Trying to be careful not to, I want to get up to the Santa hat, but I don't actually want to cover that nice snowy white area of the Santa hat. A little bit round his eyes there. I'm doing the turquoise first because the brown's such a darker colour, I didn't want to be colouring with my turquoise brush over the top of the brown and contaminate the brush. And just move the card around. So again, same with everything, so that you're working at an angle that's comfortable for you. I will tilt the, I'm trying to keep it so that you can see what I'm doing, but I will tilt the card around a little bit just so I can get the tip of the brush in there. Let's add a little bit more. And again, you'll see that the, where we've done the embossing, the clear embossing over that red lettering, that will re resist these markers. So you'll still be able to see our Merry Christmas over the top. Now let's get some sepia brown in there. Make him look a little bit more emu-like and less like, um, I don't know, what's a, what's a bird that's blue? A cookie monster. A cookie monster? It's not a bird. <laughs> He does look a bit like Cookie Monster though. <laughs> so now I've just got to be careful that we get some brown in there without losing all of our turquoise. Just make sure my brush is still wet. If I do too much of the brown, I will just make mud. But a little bit coming in close around his eyes will give them a bit more definition. But then once it's there, just drag it out a bit to soften it. 
He, when you're coloring him, it's good to not go all the way to the ends of his hair, or as he actually, his, his well, hair or feathers. Um, his head's actually smaller than that, but these are there to create the look of fluffiness. So it's good to not color right to the end of them. But it is good to feather your work and make and keep that fluffiness there. Oh, he's so cute, isn't he? So soften that with your water and then just drag it out in the direction of his feathers. Now I wouldn't want to try and colour too much with my brush marker before doing my softening with the water or else it would dry too much and it's not going to blend as easily. You'll still get some movement but it won't blend as well. So it's better to just keep it that you're doing a smaller amount at a time so that it's more manageable. And you can always go back in and add a little bit more. It's hard to take away. So always go a little bit less and then see if you think it needs a bit more. But this is definitely making him look more emu-like now and less Cookie Monster. Now there, where I put the, where I actually put the brush marker, I thought I got a bit of a, a line where it was starting. So instead of just feathering from where I put it, I actually feathered from further up and really dragged my brush through the colour. So that we got better, better blending. Now if I make that a little bit darker down this end, it's going to make that Merry Christmas stand out a little bit more. He's pretty cute. He's pretty cute. So I was just brushing out my brush just to clean it then. And I'll make sure I find the lid for the sepia brush. Pop that on. When you're putting your lids on, be careful that you don't catch the any of the brush ends. You don't want to bend those around. You want it to keep a nice point, which makes it easier for colouring. So just be a little bit careful when you're popping the lid on. Now let's have a look. I'm going to get my rag and just brush off our embossed letters again. Make sure they're standing out nice and clear. I'd be careful when you're doing that. Don't brush vigorously and brush a whole smear of brown across your card. Just touch lightly. Okay, I'm very happy with the colouring there. So now I think that would be ready to layer onto our background. So you can see by bringing, we've got that little bit of texture showing, but we've brought the colour in that we've used on the card. And I can actually just, mmm. I, I usually shade a bit of a border, but you know, we're actually looking quite good here. But I would like to put something fluffy onto his snow part there. So it could be um, liquid pearls, it could be, we could do um, a Versamark pen and some white embossing powder. I think what I'm going to do is just the liquid pearls and I won't put the glitter on this time. What I did last time was just sprinkle a little bit of loose glitter on while the pearls were still wet. But I want to see you to see it with just the shine of the pearls because that looks really good as well. So I just blob it. I don't actually want to cover the stamped outline. So I'm just doing little blobs up to the edge of the stamped image. And I don't mind if there's a few puffy peaks there. We want it to look a little bit textured. So now I'm just going along to, to fill in areas. I tend to either do dabbing or do sort of circles. So we're blobbing that into the areas of the, up, right up to the edge of the line without going over it is what I'm trying to say. And then just some tapping or some circles just to make sure we've covered the whole lot. But yeah, leave it looking really textured. Don't try and smooth it all out. Now let's show that next to our mare and you'll see the difference between just the lovely shine of the liquid pearls on their own 
compared with if you pop that little bit of glitter over the top. Both really, really pretty. There's no right or wrong, just a couple of different looks. The other thing we could do if we did it with the white embossing powder is we could add a little bit of our Stickles glitter glue over the top. So let's line those up together so you can see our finished cards. And I'll pop our other border collie one in next to there so you can see all three. So just some different looks with our gorgeous little Santa hat. Just showing how you can use it with our animals. Okay, I hope you're gonna have fun with this one and just see, you could put the Santa hat on our ladies. Um, I'm trying to think what else. You could just put the Santa hat on the edge of a word, like on the end of the, uh, the, a, um, a greeting. Could look quite good as well. Uh, it could look good on the top of the tiddly tree. Let's see how many different things we can use the Santa hat with. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon for another Christmassy crafting. Okay, bye.